Hello and welcome to Rhema Praise. Glad you tuned in to be with us today. I trust that uh, you're ready to have a good, pro good program and a good message from the Word of God to feed your faith and help you to live the kind of Christian life that uh, you're supposed to live and that God wants us to live and with the protection that He wants for us. You know, many times people don't realize that God wants to protect us. Yes. And, but if we don't call upon that, we right. have to call upon that protection in order for him to do it. That's the law right. he's brought out. And I, I'm speaking on a subject that, that the older generation will understand because they've heard it. The new generation hasn't heard it very much, and it's, I plead the blood. Now, actually, in here, I talk about where the origin, uh, uh, origin of it and so forth and so mm -hmm. on. But there, we, we, many of us have, have sang the songs and we've heard it before. There's power in the blood of Jesus. It's the blood of Jesus that will deliver you, that will set you free, that will protect you. That will and heal we, you. And we got to learn how to apply it in every area of our, our lives, even to the point, and that's what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I plead the blood. In other words, I, I put the blood of Jesus against it. It was the blood that, where the deliverance was. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't preach the message and it's, it's hard to talk about it without getting into it. So let's go where I'm preaching the message and then you can really begin to understand what I'm talking about. Let's go there. I plead the blood. How many of you have ever heard the term, I plead the blood? And many people like myself, grew up with it. But some of the people today, uh, they hear it, but they don't know what's going on. So I'm gonna try to, try to explain it today, if I can. The, uh, this is actually, as far as I'm concerned, a part of the blood covenant. But, and I'm gonna do a series on the blood covenant pretty soon. I'm also gonna do a series on the Holy Spirit. Because I think, I think we need to understand that sometimes we are not given the reverence to the Holy Spirit that we should give. Now, as, as, as I grew up in the Pentecostal circles, we were taught reverence and not to grieve the Holy Spirit. The only, the only sin that you cannot be forgiven of is grieving the Holy Spirit. It's what it says in the Bible. And that's very, it's very hard to do. So, and the problem is there, the devil uses that on a lot of people to try to tell them that they've committed the unpardonable sin, but they haven't. That's just the devil's lie. All right. Turn to Exodus 12, verse four, uh, 13, and I'm going to read the New King James, the NLT, and uh, of that. And then we're going to turn over to Leviticus 8.30, and I'm going to read the New King James and the message on that. Exodus 12, 13 and Leviticus 8, 30. You can look up both of them and then hold your finger there. You can turn there easily. Is everybody ready? Okay. Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the house where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. That, now, that's the New King James, now the NLT. But the blood on your doorpost will be a, serve as a sign marking the house where you're staying. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. This plague of death will not touch you when I strike the land of Egypt. Now go to Leviticus 8.30. Then Moses took some of the anointing oil and some of the blood which was on the altar and sprinkled it on Aaron and on his garments and on his sons and on the garments of his sons with him. And he consecrated Aaron and his garments his son, uh, and his son's garments and his sons with him. Now, 
in the message it says, Then Moses took some of the anointing oil and some of the blood from the altar and sprinkled Aaron and his garments and his son in their garments, consecrating Aaron and his garments and his son in their garments. Now, here in the first place, there was blood was applied as protection. In the second one, blood and the anointing oil together were used for consecration. Now, that probably this is the, the origin of pleading the blood has been around since uh, you could go back years and years, but if you just want to go back a few years, uh, back to the origin uh, in Pentecostal circles. And the concept of pleading the blood of Jesus has its roots there. And in fact, it would probably be looked on as one of their traditions and one of those traditions that, that is necessary and important to continue to uphold. I grew up with it and I heard my dad many, many times say, I plead the blood, I plead the blood. Now, when you begin to read some of the older books that give historical accounts of the early Pentecost in the early 1900s, you'll find it, it all through those early books. Now, one such, one such book is the Azusa Street Mission and Revival, the birth of the global Pentecostal movement. And uh, there are stories told there that where William Seymour they would come and pray for their healing, they would ask them to come and he would plead the blood and they'd be healed and they would also receive the Holy Spirit with speaking in tongues. Now, the blood of Jesus is a counter agent to all that the devil is trying to do to us. Remember, it's the blood that the devil's afraid of because it was the blood that was spilled on Calvary's hill when Christ died upon the cross. If you'll go back, you remember in the children of Israel in the Old Testament, they had to have the blood sacrifice of the lamb every year and it was applied to them as a covering for sin but you see the last blood sacrifice was the blood of the lamb of God Jesus Christ that died on Calvary and that blood was spilled not for the covering of sin but for the remission of sin See, that it, and that's a once and for all deal as long as you live in line with the Word of God and, and so forth. You, you can't live like you want to You've got and still be free from sin. You've got to live according to the Word of God. You know, uh, <clears throat> pleading the blood needs to be an active part of our confession. Now, you may have heard it this way in the charismatic circle. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. How many have ever heard that one? It's the, it's the same thing as pleading the blood. Now, we need to claim the blood in, to be involved in every aspect of our life because we say it many times. We used to sing a song all the time when I was growing up, Pow, there's power in the blood. And we've heard that. Now, when you accepted salvation through the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and it was applied to your life, then to plead the blood means that you are calling on the power in the blood or of the blood. Now, it is, it's a covering. You see, remember there in Exodus 12, 13, the blood on your doorpost is a sign marking the house where you're staying. See, there, the, the blood covered the children of Israel and protected them from the plague. This is what pleading the blood does for us. It tells the devil that we are a child of God, that we are protected through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, and it 
it is the same as putting up a no trespassing sign. Telling him, you can't come here. You don't have any authority here. We need to cover every aspect of our life by pleading the blood of Jesus. You know, you hear me say it this way all the time. Jesus built a bridge between heaven and earth with three nails and two boards. It was a cross that he was nailed to. He became the bridge where mankind could pass from sin and degradation to the heavenlies of heaven. They could from here to here, from rejection to redemption through the blood. Now, we need to plead the blood for grace and mercy. So when we do, the grace and mercy of God is activated in our lives. First Peter 1 and 2, the King James, not the, oh, the old King James Version, elect according to the foreknowledge of God and the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. And NIV says, who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctifying work of the Spirit for obedience to Jesus Christ and the sprinkling by the blood, grace and peace be yours. Now I want you to notice here, we have grace and peace uh, and mercy through, through what? Through the sanctifying work or the salvation work of the Spirit and uh, through the sprinkling of the blood. We sometimes need, we've st how many of you have studied the blood covenant? Well, we need to understand that that's, that's a covenant. But you need to pull on that covenant. But when you plead the blood, your blood, you're pulling on that covenant. How many understand where I'm coming from today? Is anybody getting anything out of this? Uh, is this interesting to you? I hope so. Actually, we, we need to plead the blood so that we can come boldly into the presence of God. Hebrews 10, 19 and 20. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest, holy of holies by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh. Now the NLT. And so, dear brothers and sisters, we can boldly enter heaven's most holy place because of the blood of Jesus. By his death, Jesus opened a new and life-giving way through the curtain into the most holy place. Now, we have to go back to the tabernacle in the wilderness and the temple that was built in Solomon's time and understand that there was a courtyard and in that courtyard was the brazen altar and that's where they killed the animals and they and they made the sacrifices. Then there was, a whole, there was a holy place. Now, in the holy place, the, the tribe of Levi, which was the ministering tribe for the children of Israel, everybody that was in any area of ministry was in the tribe of Levi, the musicians, and then there was the helps ministry there that took care of, of especially of keeping it clean and doing all the things that they, they could do. But there was only one person that could go into the most holy place or the holy of holies, as you have heard it called. And that was the priest, the high priest, not just any priest, the high priest, the main dude. Hello? And 
even to go in there, he went through a tremendous cleansing and sprinkling of the blood and so forth and so on. And they even tied a rope around his ankle. And on his, on his uniform that he wore, he had bells. You can go read it over there in Leviticus. And if they stopped tinkling, they would pull the rope and pull him out because they knew that God did not accept him because he wasn't clean. But he would take the blood of the sacrificial lamb and apply it to the mercy seat on top of the Ark of the Covenant. Now, the Ark of the Covenant was the place where the power of God dwelt. Okay? Some of y'all look at me funny. Y'all didn't know Pastor knew all that, did you? Hey, I've been to school. <laughs> I've been to Bible school, and I've studied. Now, what this is talking about, you remember when Jesus died on the cross and shed his blood on the cross and he was put in the grave, okay? When he appeared to Mary in the garden, remember he told her, do not touch me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. That by him ascending to the Father was the same thing as the high priest taking the blood in to the whole most holy place and putting it on the, sea, on the mercy seat where the, where the power of God dwelt. He was taking that precious blood, his blood that he shed to, to God in the throne room. And so by, so by doing that, that, there was a veil between the holy place and the most holy place. And that veil was ripped from top to bottom, signifying that through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, no longer did you have to have the priest or somebody as be a go-between between you and God. You, by the blood of Jesus, have become acceptable in his sight. And now you can walk boldly into the throne room. Plead the blood. We need to plead the blood to pur purge our conscience from dead works. Hebrews 9, 14. And how much more shall the blood of Christ, who, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. The NLT says it like this, just think how much more the blood of Christ will purify your conscience from sinful deeds so that we can worship the living God. For the power of the eternal spirit, Christ offered himself to God as a perfect sacrifice for our sins. Message Bible. Think how much more the blood of Christ cleans up our whole lives inside and out. It's the blood. We need to plead the blood against the spirits of fear and torment so that we can have peace, peace of mind. You've heard me say it before the greatest spiritual battles that you fight, you are fighting them with the mind. Because see, you become born again by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. But your mind, ha you have to do something about it. You have to continually renew the mind with the word of God. Hello, you heard that before. We need to learn how to plead the blood over everything in our lives, our families, our finances, our house. You know, I, Lynette and I, many years ago, we built a house. And before we moved in that house, we went through that house in every room walking through the house, pleading the blood of Jesus and putting 
driving out any, because, man, you don't know who's been in there and what kind of stuff been going on in there. Even when you buy, we bought our new house and we did, we walked through the house and did the same thing. Hello? I plead the blood of Jesus over my car. I say, I surround this car with the blood of Jesus. Devil, you can't cross the bloodline. Every night, I call all of my family members' names, my immediate family members' names, and I put the hedge of protection around them, and I put the power of the blood around them. I tell, and I tell the devil, you can't cross the bloodline. The blood of Jesus Christ made it possible for you to defeat the devil on every, every front. It matters not what it is. It's the blood of Jesus. There is power in the blood. I trust you enjoyed that sermon on I Plead the Blood. Uh, I was, one of our uh, directors here was just asking, wonder why we got away from preaching that. And I don't know, the modern generation just did, but it was a vital subject when yes. we were all growing up. And it's important because it is the, it's the blood of Jesus. Yes. Now, in the modern day, they, they might not say it like that. I plead the blood. They, they use a phrase, and I used it in the message, uh, Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. It's the same, it's the same thing. It yes. means the same thing. So I trust you got a hold of that, and, and, and you enjoyed that. You know, uh, actually, uh, I want to talk about our, our product again, this listen to your heart, hearing God in a noisy world. This, this I don't know, this book, actually, it, it's, uh, this is a, a redo of my book. And what happened is my young adults yes. uh, that's over our, our youth, they took this and put it all together in, in this format of, of a, like a study book. Mm -hmm. And it, I really like it. I like what it does. And, and it... And did Change. modern translations. And did of modern the scriptures. translations of the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Also, then, honey, your um, father's CD, The God Kind of Faith. Uh, your dad made it so simple and so easy to understand, understand on faith. And so I would encourage you to get that CD, to get this whole. This, this whole package. Yes. The, the CD and the book. Uh, 1595. Go to your computer right there. The, and of course, the announcer will tell you how you can how you can get the book. Hey, man, we got next Sunday. Next Sunday, next Sunday night. That's right. It's a great here. event. Rockets over Rama. It, it starts out with a, a patriotic presentation by our music department. I mean, it's 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 like a it's a musical drama. Yes, it's going to um, be so good. It's going to really be at 5 p.m. And then we, after it's over, we, out, we go outside. There's concessions. We have the inflatable games for, for the, the kids. kids. Hey, if you're anywhere close to this area, you want to come and be here. Bring your, bring your lawn chairs. Bring your That's blankets. Right. They set out all over. Uh, you know, last year I had about 50,000 people. Make it a family weekend. Okay. Hey, yes. uh, we have concessions, but I see, I see some people bring an ice chest in with, yes. them, with drinks and stuff That's in it. That's fine. But there's plenty, of, there's plenty of concessions that you can get. Uh, hamburgers and I think uh, corn dogs yeah. and, or you can and bring your funnel, own food. Cake, funnel cakes and all that kind of stuff is there. You know, it is a great time. You don't want to miss it. Now, July 20th through the 25th, Sunday through a Friday, is Camp Meeting 2014. Yes. And, and now a lot of you know what a Camp Meeting is, but you go back to the old days, they used to go and then camp out and then have services. Mm -hmm. Well, this is an indoor Camp Meeting. That's we right. Don't, I was at there, least we've got air conditioning. Yeah, I was there as a kid <laughs> in, under some of those tents with the sawdust and, and camping out and didn't have no air conditioning. Yes. You know, now you camp out in a hotel room. But you can go on our, on our web, rhema.org, and it tells you all the information right there, so you just go find out about it. Hey, you know, uh, we we have we have a Word of Faith magazine. 
that you can download or you can read online or you can go to rhema.org and say, I want a hard copy That's and we'll right. send it to you. It's a beautiful it, magazine. You'll probably it, want a hard copy. <laughs> but it's easier just to go and download it right That's there. You right. That's right. That's right. You print it off. I, I still like hard copies. I know you do. <laughs> or you can listen to, uh, you know, it tells you about our radio broadcast and podcast are there listen to. And we're on Roku and uh, they were telling me that we had had a, have had over 13,000 uh, subscribers yes. uh, to our Roku, uh, tuned into our Roku channel. And hey, go there. It's getting more and more popular. Uh -huh. And uh, so, you know, oh, hey, if, if you go on, on our web, it's got, you can view archived conference videos. You can join us live at our church services right here at yes. 10 a.m. on Sunday and 7 p.m. Sunday night and 7 p.m. on Wednesday night. All these are accessed through Raymond.org. Go there and find out about it. Listen, we have quite a few people that are partnered with us. And it's called the, the Word, Word Partner Club. If you would like to be involved with us and say, well, what is a Word Partner Club? Well, that's somebody that prays for us. And then once a month, they send in a, a, a financial gift. Uh, it can be large or small because when yes. we all come together, we're able to keep this program going all over the world. We're touching people everywhere. Actually, if you if you got a, a computer, you just go to rhema.org slash WPC and you can go out, or you can go just to the rhema.org and then, and it'll you can guide your way through there also. Yes. So we we hey, thank all of you work partners. You are so great and you're helping us. And we thank you for the new ones that are going to join us because all of you together are helping us to bring hope, hope help, help, and, and healing, healing to, to the, the world. world. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Have faith in God. Or have the God kind of faith. The God Kind of Faith, a classic CD sermon by Kenneth E. Hagin, explains that the same faith God used to speak the world into existence and the same faith Jesus used to command the fig tree to wither is the same faith in you today. Listen to your heart, hearing God in a noisy world, a powerful book by Kenneth W. Hagin with chapters like What is the Heart? Dividing the Soul and Spirit, Training Your Human Spirit, and much more. Both the book and the audio CD can be yours for only $15.95 by calling today, toll free, 888-PRAISE-8, or just log on to rhema.org day or night. Thank you for watching Rama Praise with Ken and Lynette Hagen. Ken, Lynette, and Rama Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information, please write, call, or visit our website. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope, help, and healing for a hurting world.